I might have done another episode muted. I don't know how or when that muted, but.
processed and unprocessed. This was exactly how Donna described the computer in building number eight. So this was the one. The folder labeled unprocessed contained an image, but the file was huge so Gary couldn't download it. So he tried to view it on the remote desktop. So Gary McKinnon clicked the file and watched as the image appeared pixel by pixel, line by line. At first, he saw nothing but blank space, but then the hemisphere of the planet began to form, and then he saw clouds, and then about two-thirds of the way down, he saw what he was looking for, a spaceship. Ah. Gary saw a large silver cylinder, completely smooth, no rivets or scenes of any kind, but a few seconds after opening the file, Gary noticed the mouse on the remote computer moved, but he wasn't moving it. Uh-oh, the jig is up. Whoever was sitting at the computer in building number eight turned off their network connection, and Gary was disconnected. Oh no, did, did he get a screenshot? Nope, no time. So the good news for Gary McKinnon was his suspicions were proved correct. The bad news? The US Hopefully. government was onto him. Oh, that too. Inflation is everywhere. Would you like some lemonade? Five dollars, please. Five. What? Everywhere but Dish. Now get the same TV film every month for three years. Something I'm not supposed to be able to do. I totally could have. Is this a UFO? And he's smiling at me and he says, I can't tell you that. What I knew he meant was, it was, but he couldn't tell me. So I said, what are you going to do with this information? And he said, well, we always have to airbrush them out before we sell them to the public. And I was just amazed that they had a protocol in place for getting rid of UFO pictures. Gary McKinnon stumbled onto more evidence of what he saw in the file of non-terrestrial officers. Evidence of a secret space program within the U.S. military. And this secret space program isn't new. There are clues about it going back over 50 years. In the 1960s, the U.S. Air Force had a program that ran in parallel with NASA's Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs. It was called the Manned Orbiting Laboratory, or MOL. The MOL program had its own facilities and its own staff. They had uniforms and spacesuits, but they were completely different from NASA's. So there'd be no confusion that the MOL employees worked for a completely different program. The operation was so secret that not even the wives knew what their husbands were working on. And wives don't need to know nothing. What happens in orbit stays in orbit. You've been divorced how many times? Three? Oh, cheap shot. The MOL program was created to develop a spy station in space, but it was canceled by President Richard Nixon in 1969. Oh, was it? Right. But what Gary and stumbled onto was something far bigger than some Cold War spy program. After Gary found the cigar-shaped UFO on the NASA computer and got caught, US officials began to pressure the UK to help track him down. In early 2002, Gary was arrested and charged with 97 counts of causing damage to US intelligence assets. And he was accused of doing $800,000 worth of damage. The US government claimed he hacked into dozens of military computers and 16 NASA computers. They claimed he altered and deleted files and that his activities were in the U.S. government's words, intentional and calculated to influence and affect the U.S. government by intimidation and coercion. These charges were very aggressive. Clearly, the U.S. government was concerned about what Gary found, so they wanted to make an example of him and make sure no one else would ever try to access a single document mentioning UFOs. Gary McKinnon spent 10 years defending himself against these charges and trying to stay in the U.K. If he were charged in the United States, he'd be facing up to 70 years in federal prison. The media picked up the story but downplayed the UFO connection. McKinnon was described as a hacker trying to harm the Pentagon. The only major publication to mention the UFO side of the story was the UK Daily Mail. Gary said this publicity is one of the things that saved him. Eventually, his case landed on the desk of UK Home Secretary Theresa May, who would eventually go on to be Prime Minister. She ruled that McKinnon could not be taken back to the US because he suffered from Asperger's. Now, Gary McKinnon did break the law. There's no disputing that. But he also did the U.S. a favor. Using the hacker named Solo, he sent messages to U.S. agencies telling them their security was weak. He felt he was morally justified. I thought if this technology really does exist, it should be used for the good of all of us. You know, um, free energy, um, or at least very cheap. If it's being kept secret, why? Because obviously that would be used against people if it's being kept secret, rather than further, furthering humanity. Um, but at the time, there was a very popular phrase banded about called heating or eating. Old age pensioners have to choose whether to pay for their heating or pay to have food and then sit on their chair with a blanket and eat their food. Gary McKinnon's case finally ended in 2012 and he became a celebrity in the UFO community. He exposed or at least said he'd exposed government knowledge of an alien presence, but his case proved there was something much more sinister going on. This wasn't 
something as simple as the U.S. government covering up UFOs, this was proof that there was a highly organized secret space program in place. This program has a staff of thousands. It has a fleet of spaceships. It has weapons more advanced than anything currently in use. And this program has a name. Solar War. Another incident, I knew someone in quarantine with the Apollo astronauts. He told me that the Apollo astronauts saw crap on the moon when we landed. The astronauts were told to keep this quiet. They're not allowed to talk about it. At the same time, Gary McKinnon was snooping NASA servers. Rumors were going around about a secret space program named Solar Warden. Solar Warden came out of a program called the Strategic Defense Initiative. This was a Reagan-era defense program nicknamed Star Wars by the media. Now, this program has multiple space platforms similar to aircraft carriers. Its mission is to scan the solar system for unauthorized alien intrusions and report those intrusions to the U.S. Space Force. According to the rumors, the U.S. and other nations have treaties that say only a small number of alien visitors are allowed on Earth at a time. But the aliens have been breaking the treaties for decades. Not torrents. Everybody knows those damn not torrents can't be trusted. That sounds kind of racist. Save it for Twitter. Touche. As the story goes, Reagan was briefed on the aliens by military and civilian leaders. He immediately became determined to protect the Earth from the alien presence. How do we know this? Reagan said so himself. In 2007, Robert Collins published The Reagan Diaries. This book is an insight into the president's daily life in the White House. His entries aren't written like a memoir. They're just thoughts that Reagan jotted down throughout the day. And on page 334, dated June 11, 1985, the president made the following entry. Lunch with five top space scientists. It was fascinating. Space truly is the last frontier, and some of the developments therein are like science fiction, except they are real. I learned that our shuttle capacity is such that we could orbit 300 people. Whoa, the Gipper let a big one slip, eh? He sure did. Now, if you know the space program, this entry makes no sense. The maximum capacity of a NASA space shuttle is eight people. At the time, the entire fleet was only four shuttles. Even if all the shuttles were used at the same time, which they never were, that's only 32 people. So, what's Reagan talking what? about? Later, people suggest that Reagan might not have been talking about space shuttles at all. Maybe he was referencing a program that was supposed to be canceled in 1979. A program to develop a space plane called Star Raker. Ooh, like the James Bond movie. No, that was Moon Raker. Oh, right. Uh, hey, you know that girl at the end of the movie had braces? Yep, I thought so too, no, which she doesn't. Did. That's a Mandela effect. I can't get my brain to accept it. I can't either. Anyway, the Star Raker, unlike the shuttle, could carry a lot of people. It was bigger than a 747. It could carry a payload of 200,000 pounds, more than enough to put 300 people on a space platform. So it's possible that Reagan was right, and Solar Warden is real, at least technically. The first reference to a secret space program with the name Solar Warden is from early 2006. An anonymous post appeared on a bulletin board called the Open Minds Forum. We have a space fleet, which is codenamed Solar Warden. There were, as of 2005, eight ships, equivalent to aircraft carriers, and 43 protectors, which are space planes. One was lost recently to an accident in Mars orbit, while it was attempting to resupply the multinational colony within Mars. This base was established in 1964 by American and Soviet teamwork. Not everything is as it seems. We have visited all the planets in our solar system, at a distance of course, except Mercury. We've landed on Pluto and a few moons. These ships contain personnel from many countries and have sworn an oath to the world government. The technology came from that engineering alien disc wreckage and at times with alien assistance. For a few years, Solar Warden flew mostly under the radar in UFO circles. But in 2012, Solar Warden was back. In November of that year, a Huffington Post article by reporter Darren Perks was the first major news article about Solar Warden. It was also the first to tie in the story of Gary McKinnon. The article claimed that the program began in 1980 and operates under the U.S. No. Naval Network and Space Operations broken. Command, the That's NNSOC. Everything. The space fleet has eight Nothing massive carriers, be. each over 600 feet long. Each carrier is staffed by 300 people and protected by about 40 scout ships. And these ships are used to intercept alien intruders. According to the report, there are permanent multinational bases on the moon and Mars that are supplied by the carriers. So that's why we never went back to the moon. Right. At least, not publicly. Darren Perks personally investigated the Solar Warden story. In 2010, he was contacted by a whistleblower in the U.S. Department of Defense. This contact confirmed that Solar Warden 
misunderstood the grind. Freedom of information request with the DOD Department of Defense in 2010. I had a much unexpected response by email from them which read, About an hour ago I spoke to a NASA rep who confirmed this was their program and it was terminated by then President Obama. He also informed me that it was not a joint program with the DOD. The NASA rep informed me that you should be directed to the Johnson Space Center FOIA manager. So assuming Burks was a lie, the email response clearly indicated someone wouldn't exist or something like it did, but was canceled by President Obama in the early 2000s. Burks never followed up on his original article, and as you might expect, neither NASA nor the DOD has ever mentioned it. So if all we have are reports from anonymous people, that's not much proof of so important. But in 2007, we'd get more evidence, and this time, they're pictures. I am working on it.
but weather reports say the day the photo was taken was perfectly clear. So whatever Lindsay's photo is, it's probably not one of the originals. But the original photograph was taken by two civilian hikers. And for some strange reason, their identities are classified until the year 2076. And the photos do match the craft developed by the Aurora Project. And there are plenty of witnesses who say that's exactly what the Calvin UFO really is. So unless the original photos are found or we can speak to the hikers, we may never know what the object really was. Now, skeptics of Solar Warden say it's too difficult to keep such a large program secret that people who were part of the program would talk. And they're right, people would talk. In fact, they did.
says he doesn't know anything about Solar Ward nor how he got associated with it. He never saw that name on any document or image that he accessed. It seems that the article by Darren Perks in 2012 is what connected Gary to the Solar Ward mythology. And it's easy to understand the connection. The picture of the ship McKinnon saw sounds a lot like the carrier platforms in Solar Ward stories. But even if Gary McKinnon saw a picture of a UFO, and I believe he did, it's a leap to go from one photo to a huge secret space program conspiracy. Now, other aspects of the story, the carriers, the fighters, the large crews, and the guarding of the solar system, these sound like the plots of well-known science fiction books and TV shows. For example, a spaceship, moon bases, Looks and like fighters that monitor the solar system come straight from a 1970 so British TV show called UFO. Oh, is that the groovy one with the moon girls in short skirts and <laughs> suits and the purple wigs? That's the one. Did I mention the short skirts? You did. He's a great show. He's really, uh, he's such a good, uh, oh, he's, uh, I always liked the, uh, the show also featured Sid, the space intruder detector. Its job was to scan near Earth space for alien intruders, just like Solar Warden. And some of the eyewitnesses, like Corey Good, have been exposed as frauds. He was forced to testify under oath that he made the whole thing up, especially the part about the blue aliens helping to protect the Earth. Well, maybe he made that part up, uh, but lizard people are definitely real. Eyewitnesses like Laura Eisenhower and Andrew Basiago may be telling the truth, but their stories are a hodgepodge of every science fiction trope you can think of. Time travel, teleportation, zero-point energy, and the list goes on. Now, I'm not saying they're lying, but I am saying they both tell very convoluted stories. The only aspect of Solar Warden that holds up to any scrutiny is Gary McKinnon's personal testimony. But unfortunately, that's all we have, his word. Now, think of the logistics involved in something like Solar Warden. In order for it to work, every nation on Earth would have to be involved. Russia, China, the US, and really every industrialized country on Earth is aware when any other country launches a rocket of any kind. You couldn't put a fleet's worth of equipment into space without somebody noticing. You'd also have to constantly be sending food and water and air into space to resupply the fleet. Oh, they raise their own livestock in space, and they grow vegetables with hydroponics. What do you know about hydroponics? Uh, let's just say in college, I was very, uh, industrious. With all of its unknowns. So if Solar Warden does exist, that would mean every nation on Earth has set aside their differences and come together for a common goal. That's actually a nice a thought. Time, Unfortunately, yeah. that common goal is protecting the human race really from destruction did. by an alien invasion. I, now that's terrifying. I got to so I don't that. know if Solar Warden is real. What I but when I think oh, about its I'm purpose, not what they I really expected. hope it isn't. I just... Anyways. Thank you I so much for hanging out with us today. My name is AJ. That's Hagglefish. Greetings, Hagglefish. This has been the Wild yeah, House. If you had fun or learned anything, do him a favor and like, subscribe, comment, and share. That stuff really makes Hagglefish happy. Now, like most topics we cover on the channel, today's was recommended by you. And if there's a story you'd like to see or learn more about, go to thewildfiles.com slash tips. And special thanks to our patrons who make this channel possible. Especially when we get demonetized for no reason, like last week. If you'd like to be part of a great community, check out the Wi Files on Discord. It's a lot of fun and free to join. But if you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a member of Patreon or grab something for the Wi Files to work. Hey, all of the coffee mugs are completely 100% festival. That's true. Until next time, be safe, be kind, and know that you are what you do. That's better not be the only way into the station.
Pretty. Minions. Ooh, that is Blizzon, of common element for storing energy. But why does it look so purple? Maybe it's related to all the dimensional chaos happening. If that is the case, I believe hitting it will either. I knew it. The Blizzon must have absorbed the excess energy released by the dimensional chaos. Come on, guys. We have shifted into another dimension. An abandoned dimension, from the looks of it. Oh. Here. Oh, get back to that. Let's move the orbs. It helps, Ratchet. I have never met my family either. Unless you count the Emperor. You're a robot. In which case, you cannot do any worse. Probably not. But even if the Lombaxes are the best family ever, they could still be disappointed in me. How? You are a hero. I've hit a few bad guys, sure, but they invented so many brilliant things. You sell yourself short. Maybe, but I have a good life in my dimension, Kit, and I don't want to risk it. <laughs> Speaking of risk, if Kandaro Station exists in this dimension, do you think the Rubion Forge does too? Possibly, but with the state of everything here, who knows if it would work? Maybe our best bet then is to find some more bleeds on and head back to the other dimension. So there doesn't seem to be any enemies. Keep our shield out just in case. Wait a minute, what was that? Wonderful find. Dun, 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 dun. Give me two seconds here and we'll continue. Sorry about this.
Looks like, uh, oh no. I thought my guys took care of him. guys not to upgrade them for doing such good work more of them that's the me boys multiply in all dimensions I can hear their stomach rumbling Keep moving. Oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I thought you were someone else, but uh, you're not. <laughs> is he okay? I'm Ratchet. Oh, that is great. Hello, Ratchet. Were you looking for me? That would be great, too. Ooh, can I call you Chet? No. And no. <laughs> I'm uh, looking for some Blizzon. Oh, I know just the place. But I lost my access arm in all of this water. Have to drain it. But how, Ratch? How? Calm down. Oh, I'll gosh. handle it. If the room is prone to flooding, they would likely keep the pump controls somewhere high. Hey, Ratcho. You did not ask for it, but my name is Junkbot. In case you are interested, I know I am. Pleasure to meet you, Junkbot. This is Kit. Hello. Trying to get into another dimension to use their Rubion Forge. Too bad it has not worked in forever. It can make some fun as squares. Yeah. That's just a fish. Ah, my favorite arm! This way! My favorite arm. Oh, wonderful. So, is that access arm like some kind of key? If by key you mean a way to easily and safely press buttons, then yes. What? Easily but please safely on. Press buttons. Oh, there is an elevator that will take us to one of those delightfully glowing crystals right up ahead. It's literally just a button. Or, or, or JC! Oh, that is a swell nickname! 
I don't think I'm gonna be friends with that guy. Or anyone who tries to kill me. I have a thing against people trying to kill me. I warped yeah. into this glass. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Wait a minute. Hold the phone there. Huh? All that stuff I missed. Important stuff. I'm not getting back there. I'm not gonna get anywhere. Get back up. Any ideas? That'll work. Oops. Package load. And one more. Get back there. Oh well.
Running on empty. This is goodbye then. Thanks for all your help, junk bot. My pleasure. Please call me Rob Rock Kitty. Very funny. Tell George Bot he'd better watch his back tomorrow. The Ruby on Ford should be just ahead. I like literally ran into That's him. actually a funny story. Was I talking to you? Mm -hmm. You are talking to me. We are under lockdown. How did you and your Steve get in here? I am inspecting your facility and how white it is and orange because I am an interior decorator, first class. And the Emperor wanted this redecoration to be a surprise for you and your team. But now, you ruined it. I would never do that to the Emperor. Please come in and consider my memory banks deleted. Nice save, decorator kit. What do we do now? Conversing with the researchers could help decrease suspicion. Or we can head straight to the Forge's controls and make the Dimensionator. Looks like the Forge's controls are right up on that platform. Schematics uploaded. What do we got? 
I see. Are you winging this? <laughs> Come on. <gasps> you ran the forge with auxiliary power only? The main power button was right there! Ah, just running a stress test. Let me see. Yes, everything is breaking correctly. Let's get out of here before... Get those charlatans! Greetings, intruders. Let us escort you to the biology wing. You would be perfect for our own... Why did the forge not work? I guess it wasn't fully powered? But that other button didn't look right. You said you were not winging this. I'm not. I'm intuiting it. Security's everywhere. We gotta get out of here. What about the Dimensionator? We'll figure something out. that could make the Dimensionator. There's still one in this dimension, though. Maybe we can get it working again. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> ah, rat! Kitty! Junkbot! What would it take to get your Rubion Forge working again? Well, there is the power issue. With the power gone, some kind of nasty virus has infected the system. Nothing will work until it is cleared. I think I have just a friend who can help with that. Sure do. We have five minutes All to do yours, it. Glitch. I 
X to fire. died. Like, comment, and subscribe. This is the end of this episode. We have less than a minute left. Next time. The computer is starting to come Again, back it helps on. if you like, comment.